second epistle of John. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. Now we pick up 26 lesson, uh, the second epistle of John, from the beginning. And you got to ask, from the beginning of what? Well, what a statement from the beginning. First John one one. First John one one it says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word, capital W, of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Now, I'm going to read another verse. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his son, Jesus Christ. So John starts the first epistle of John stating a, a fact. The beginning of the walk of the Lord Jesus Christ he had with his disciples. John was one of the first few disciples that he chose after Peter and Andrew. Then came James and John. Handle the word of life, it says in 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. Let's look at John, the Gospel of John 1.1. 1, 1. The Gospel of John 1.1. 1, 1. Look at that, what John says about John. Not what I think, it's not what anybody else thinks, it's scripture with scripture. John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the word, capital W, we saw that in 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, the Word. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. We're going to see that in a minute. And the life was the light of man. Come over to verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, and even to them that believe on his name. Which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's a mouthful. That we see from the beginning, the second of Epistle of John, we see from the first epistle of John 1 1, and we see from the, the gospel of, of John 1 1. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the Word, the living Word. Let's go over to Genesis 1 1. Let's see what we got here. Genesis 1 1. We're talking about in the beginning. I got everything falling out of my Bible. All right, Genesis 1 1, the first 
page of your Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, look at that. In the beginning, verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 1, we have God. Verse 2, we have the Holy Spirit of God. There is God, and there is God the Holy Spirit. Where is Jesus the Word? John 1, 1. 1 John 1, 1. We read about the Word, capital W. Where is the Word Jesus in Genesis 1? We have God, we have the Holy Spirit. Well, let's look. Genesis 1, 3. And God said, Verse 6, and God said. Verse 9, and God said. Verse 11, and God said. 14, and God said. 20, and God said. 24, and God said. 26, and God said. 28. And God blessed them, and God said, 29. And God said. And chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said. Well, when you say something, what is that? There's the word. Eleven times. The Lord Jesus Christ shows up with God and the Holy Spirit in the creation. And we read in John 1, the gospel, about all things were made by him. Who? The Word. The Word that became flesh. The Word that is the Son of God. That Word is, and God said. That is Jesus Christ. The Word. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So if God is love, and He is, then in the very beginning was love. God did not make hospitals and cancer and Trials and troubles and tribulations. That came as a result of man's rebellion in Genesis chapter 3. The Creator provided everything that man would need. Philippians 4.19. You can go check that yourself. Before he created man. Listen, in the days of creation, God gave oxygen. God gave water. God gave fruits and vegetables. God gave animals. God gave a solid ground for man to walk on. God gave man water to drink before man was ever created. That loving God that was in the beginning provided for all our needs before our beginning. So, whether you distrust or not, I have confidence in the gap theory. And that gap theory, if you don't know, shows up in Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God made the... Listen, that's why the earth is, is said to be millions and billions of years old. That is a fact. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was... Somewhere between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, something happened. What? I don't know. I wasn't there. That could have been the dinosaurs. That could have been the cavemen. That could have been anything. I believe that God made it all in Genesis 1-1. And between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2 is where Lucifer falls, Isaiah 14. And that is where I believe that hell was created between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2, Matthew 25. 
Jesus said that hell was made for Satan and his angels. It was not made for man because man was not around yet. In Genesis 1-3 is the present day earth and our solar system of the Milky Way. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That is what our earth, our solar system, the universe that we are in today. Genesis 1-1 was the solar system and the earth and everything before the fall of Lucifer. God focused his love one time on angels. Lucifer, one of them, and obtained some of them. Lucifer, who we call the devil or Satan, demands that the love to God be granted to him and him alone. God loved man. So Satan hunted him and acquired him also. Satan knew that man was a special creation of God. Angels do not have blood. Angels don't have souls. Angels cannot be redeemed. Them angels that follow Satan, one third if not more the angels, but the Bible says one third of the nation of the of the of the angels will be in hell with the one they are following, Satan. So, in the beginning, was not a big bang. In the beginning, it was God, the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis 1-1, Genesis 1-2, and Genesis 1-3 is the Holy Trinity. But an event happens between 1-1 and 1-2, and we're not going to discuss that. That's another whole study. So let's go to John 3.16. John, again. The Gospel of John is the same writer in the Epistle of John. All three of them. So John 3.3, 3, we see, and you see, sometimes you have a ball game, somebody will hold a sign, John 3.16. That's better than nothing. For God so loved the world, you see Genesis 1 1, that he gave his only begotten Son, God the Father, there is the world, the people, and the Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, when did John 3 16 take place? You ever read the verse? You ever hear that people say that, that God loves the sinner and hates the sin? Shall we rebuke that? Shall I burst your bubble to tell you that God does not love the sinner today, present, no matter when you see this video or hear this audio? Now some of you are just... Let's look at the scriptures, let's study, and let's bust man in his big bubble. Okay? So let's read it. For God so loved. That's wrong. I misquoted that verse already. One, two, three, four words, uh, and I already followed up. For God so loved. See the D? That's past tense. And when I go on the street corners, or I give you this audio, or I give you a message, and I say, for God so loved the world, that's past tense. That is not present. That he gave, past tense. Whosoever believeth in him, present tense. Yes. 
It was at Calvary on the cross. That is a beginning. But it wasn't man's beginning. God already knew for knowledge that Adam and Eve, or Eve and Adam, because Eve first, first fell, would fall. Was for God so loved the world before or after Adam fell? Before would be the answer. But you say Calvary happened. I know. Isn't that a remarkable God that we have? See, some people will get birthday cards and it will read, Life begins at 30, 40, 50, etc. No. Life begins at, For God so loved the world. Before man had any life, God loved him. John 3.16 is something to think about. Eternity before time and seasons. Before man. Before there were cuckoo clocks and alarm clocks and sundials. A measure of days, months, and years. Because in eternity, there are no such things as time. Maybe after Genesis 3, the sun spoke. Jesus Christ, the sun, pointing I don't know exactly what happened, but walked up to the father and said something like, Father, I'll go back, I'll go down there and I will redeem them back from Satan. Because after Genesis 3, man is lost and God knew exactly what man was going to do. It's the foreknowledge of God and it is the free will of man that this Calvinism does not understand God irritated at man he curses man and the woman and the serpent for our God is a consuming fire for God is holy and the question would be why son why would you do that Father, we love them humans. Look at Genesis chapter 2. Verse that I don't have in it. Yeah, but look at Genesis chapter 2. Do you realize Genesis 1, 1, the Revelation 22, is about the Lord Jesus Christ and his effect with humankind? All dogs don't go to heaven. That's a lie. And we find something in Genesis 2 that we don't find with cows and pigs and everything else you can eat. In Genesis chapter 2, we find a remarkable statement. In verse 7, For the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You're just that dust in the wind. You're dirt. You're dirty. You're filthy. And you will, you will return back to dirt within time. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of what? Your air. Isn't it funny how I, I was going to say a quote from the song Dust in the Wind. And then there, there's a group out there called Air Supply. You know Lucifer was the first being to deal with music and music for God. Do 
You better believe Satan knows the Bible and Satan knows the words and Satan speaks through his music. Study the music out there in the lyrics. Well, anyway, breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Tell me where God breathed into a turkey and gave him life. Tell me where God breathed into a gerbil. Now they're living, but there's nowhere it said anything. And by chapter 2, verse 7, defies evolution. God breathed into man, and man became a living soul by the foundation of our body that God made and filled our lungs with the air, the breath of life. And then answered by the son would be, Father, we love them humans. Let me become a human, but yet be God also. Now, can you imagine the father pondering what the, th what the son has offered? To take on the nature of of Adam through the being of God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son enough said not only did God give his son but the son gave himself willingly how's that Man had nothing to do with it. It is all on the merit of God. Look at Acts 20, 28. I showed this to a Jehovah Witness, and they didn't even want to see it. Ran right off my doorstep. So if you want to get the Jehovah Witnesses off your doorstep, use Acts 20, 28. With a Bible. Acts 20:28 20, says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over the which the Holy Ghost, the third member of the Trinity, ready, has made you overseers to feed the church of God, there's God, which he, God, has purchased with his own blood. The blood is the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ shed his sinless blood that we may be sinned, that we, we may be washed. And according to Acts 20 28, that blood is God's blood. There's the Trinity. There is the Trinity at work in your salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his blood. For God so loved the world he gave his son the blood. And you have to say it's before Adam. Because what? No one could be saved by God until... When, God, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus that night, and then from that time on. No, listen, that bloodshed was for all those that were in Abraham's bosom. They weren't redeemed by the sinless, by the holy blood of the Lord Jesus Christ until he died and was buried and rose again. But, Gen, I mean, John 3.16, according to Acts 20.28, 20, is God, is the Holy Spirit, and it's Jesus. It says also in the Gospel of John that when they pierced his side, out came, I forget, blood and water or water and blood. But blood came out of the Lord Jesus Christ's side. And that blood is God's blood, Acts 20, 28. When they whipped him with the cat of nine tails, that blood that spurted over that whip was God's blood. 
Imagine what you can do with the DNA from them. Acts 20:28 20, is the merit of God and Jesus Christ. Even the fallen angels cannot be redeemed. No angel in this dispensation called the church age can witness to any man. When the angel appeared to Cornelius, go get a man that is full of blood, saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call him over. An angel does not understand blood. Cut an angel and he won't believe. Christ did not die for angels. For God so loved the world. That's man. That's not animals. That's not angels. That's not Lucifer. Angels cannot be redeemed, but man can be. Now, who did God love more? You want to follow Lucifer? Without no hope, no care, go into the devil's hell and with you angels that want to follow him. I made hell for you, for Satan and for you angels. You cannot be, no, no, don't even say you're sorry. You cannot be redeemed. You follow Lucifer, you go straight to hell. Man, why did you take that fruit I told you not to do? You're cursed with a curse. Why have you broken all my laws? Why have you broken all my commandments? Why have you rebelled and rejected me and rebelled and reject me, rebelled and reject me? Over and over and over and over. What? What's the question? What must I do to be saved? No, you can't be saved. Go to hell. No. That's not what Cal that's not what Calvin's teaching is wrong. God doesn't say that. The question in Acts 16:30 is what must I do to be saved? The loving God for man for God so loved the world that he gave, the question is, what shall I do to be saved? And the answer by God is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Calvin, take your doctrine and throw it in the garbage can. That Philippian jailer received that and got saved. He could have rejected it. But he didn't. Now it says, and thy family. They could have gone to his house, which they did. And Uncle George could have heard the gospel. George, you need to be saved. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as, as you're saved. No, no one have anything to do with that. I got my little dollies. I got my religion. Whatever he had, George had. He rejected by the free will. The free will, and it's the foreknowledge of God. God already knows, but He gives you the opportunity to choose. That's a loving God. Calvin's God is a fierce, unrighteous, unholy God to say, You go to heaven and you go to hell, no matter what you do, what matter you don't do, it's settled. That's that's wrong. All right, get back to where we're going. The Bible records that saints, those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul writes, so I believe in the Corinthian church, that saints will judge angels. Did you know if you do what, what the Bible tells you to do faithfully, you will judge angels? 
Angels are in a heavily sponsored place by God that, that made them. I have never seen God a day in my life. But God tells me, go ye and tell those people about Jesus Christ. Yes, sir, Lord, I'll go ahead. What did he tell Thomas in, in the Gospel of John? He said, Thomas, you believe because you've seen the holes, you've seen the, the, the hole in my side, but blessed are those who have believed and have not seen me. Angels have seen God. I haven't. And I'm going to judge those angels or Christians that do what God tells them to do. Faithful men of God will judge them angels which saw God and we never saw God. We were never physically, we're spiritually in God's presence, but physically, I never stood before God. I have no idea what heaven looks like. I am believing by faith, so here we go. Saints will judge angels. Angels never need faith. What are you going to tell an angel? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What is it an angel has never seen? He's seen God. He's seen Jesus. He's seen the Holy Spirit. He's seen Satan. He's seen the throne. He's seen man's creation. He's seen the beginning of the earth. He's seen David. He's seen all the, all the Bible live. He watched Jesus die on the cross. I never did. Angels don't need faith. I do as a man. How about that? My faith in God and the shed blood of Lord Jesus Christ, I will judge an angel because he didn't need faith. And he rebelled against God. How about that? You know, there are Jews in Exodus 20 that heard God's voice and still rebelled against him. And yet, for those who have never heard or never seen God, what will be the judgment placed upon them that heard God or even seen God and rejected Him? For God so loved the world, there is no comparison. What could you like that? What can you like in that love to today? Imagine you're going to you're going to give your life for somebody, but you already know that person is going to talk about you. They're going to be against you. They're going to mock you, and they're going to destroy your people. And will man still step in to save his life? Jesus already knew people would take his name in vain. Jesus already knew people would reject him. And people, Jesus already knew they would spit and they'll, they'll, they'll curse his salvation. And yet he still went to the cross and still died and was still buried and still arose from the grave that we may have life for the many that will reject and the few that will receive. God is love. God gave his son. God gave himself. It is never said, for God so loved the angels. Or contrary to Hollywood, all dogs go to heaven again. For God so loved the, the, the dogs. No, that is not what is said. And if you believe your dog or your cat or your pet or any animal can be saved, you have reduced the blood of and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit to shame. Save the whales. Save this. Save the whales for after the potatoes and the peas. God will save man and not animals. You've got a particular religion where your people are dying of hunger and you let grandma cow go walk around. Don't expect me to give any money for you to, to be fed when you got steak and hamburgers walking around, but it may be grandpa. You have a defiled religion. 
Because my religion says I don't have a religion. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God of proof. So I have something more than what the world has. I have the one that died for the world. The one that sacrificed for himself for the world. I have the one that even the world rejects still did his love act for God is love. God did not love the dogs that he gave his son. He loved humans. Angels lack faith. For they have seen God. I have not seen God. God loves me. And I guarantee you he loves the angels that, that are still following him. I'm not saying he doesn't. But God has more love for me because I believe on him because I have never seen him. Angels have seen it. Look at Hebrews 11. Let's go to Hebrews 11, another verse here. You know, it's amazing how God just works in my life. It's light in the word of God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Well, angels don't have faith. You know the day when your faith human dies? I'm looking for the blessed hope and the glorious fear of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know where my faith ends? When I see Jesus. And look what it says. Verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I hope for the Lord Jesus Christ. The evidence of things not seen. I haven't seen Jesus. The day that I see Jesus is the day that that faith is gone. I've seen him. But without faith it is impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. What angel does not deny God is God? They know who God is. They acknowledge God is God. Listen, the, the devils feared Jesus and knew that one day Jesus would judge them and Jesus had to shut their mouth. I believe in God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. I believe in God. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I screw up on some words. God is going to reward me because I believe in by faith in something that I have not seen. In someone that I have not seen. I haven't even seen the cross. I haven't even seen the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I haven't even seen God's throne, but I believe it. Angels have seen the throne. Angels have seen the Son. The angels have seen the Holy Spirit. The angels were there at Calvary. The angels were there when Jesus was in the in the garden praying. The angels were there when, when Jesus was tempted by Satan. But that which we had from the beginning was Jesus Christ offering himself to the Father before and after man was. There was the love of God. Romans 5.8. We'll run some verses here. Romans 5.8. But God commanded his love toward us, man, the world, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died before I was saved. Christ died when I was a sinner. Christ died long before I was born. I was born in September 6, 1968. Christ died 33 AD, right around there. It goes more than a date of A.D. before I was to be. That, that is before Genesis 1. Let's, let's look at some more. Uh, that was Romans 5, 8. Romans 8, 35. We're going to look at Scripture. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? For God so loved the world, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? John 3.16 is the love of God and it's the love of Jesus Christ. 
Ephesians 3.19. Ephesians 3.19. In King James 1611 Bible. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Jesus loved you. Now he went to the Father and said, Father, I will go become a man. I will take hell. I will take your brutality. I will take your wrath. I will take what man deserves and I will put it upon myself that I may redeem the creation of man that we made, that we breathe life into him. Before man was ever even made. For God so loved the world is also for Christ so loved the world that he gave himself. 5-2, Ephesians 5-2. And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, loved, and has given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Christ did all to God for us because of love. 1 Timothy 1.14 1 Timothy 1.14 The grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant and faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Now, 1 John 4.19 Watch this one. Watch this one, 1 John 4, 19. You look this one up. You mark this one. Ready? We love him because he first loved us. He loved us before we loved him. He loves them before he died for them. That's a remarkable statement. You think Jesus loved somebody that rejected him today? He loved them at Calvary. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But if you reject what he done on the cross for your soul, you truly outright rebel against what Jesus' love is. He doesn't love you. That love was past tense, for God so loved the world. That love does not come to be until you receive Christ as your Savior. Then you get the love of God. Study 1 John. Love that we were vile, wicked, disobedient, and rebellious, and yet he loved us to death. That he gave. And God giving, check out Genesis 22 a We're limited on time. Says he gave himself, which means Jesus Christ is himself, Acts 20, 28. It says God shed his blood. I'm just looking here. We're running out of time. God knew man needed one, God, two, love, three, atonement. And God provided all three, Isaiah 53, Matthew 26 and 27, Luke 22 and 23, Mark 14 and 15, and John 18 and 19. Read that about what Jesus Christ done for you that God won't do to you through the wrath. In condemnation, John chapter 3. 
And when you study what Christ had done for you to please God, now if that isn't love, what is? Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountains. 